subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Have you ever wondered why you don't see many young faces in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's team? The average age of his government is 60 years. And that's at a time when you see many young leaders, under 35 leaders, becoming Prime Ministers. And in Finland, you had Sanna Marin, who is uh, 34 years old actually. She became the Prime Minister last December, Prime Minister of Finland. She's the youngest Prime Minister in the world. Then you have in Austria, the Chancellor of Austria, Sebastian Kurz. He's just 33 years old. In fact, the first time he had become the Chancellor, he was just 31 years old. And he became the Foreign Minister at the age of 27. What do we have in India? We have the youngest minister in Modi government, that is Smithy Irani, who is 43 years old. So we are not expecting any under 35 leaders to become the Prime Minister of India. I mean, such a complex democracy we have. The complexity of our political system may not probably throw up such a young leader as Prime Minister, I mean, in the foreseeable future. But at least you can have some of them in the government. Now, in this Lok Sabha, you have 64 MPs who are below 40 years. Out of 64, 26 are from the BJP. How many of them are in the government? Now we talk about a young team. Let's say, uh, the, of course, the definition of youth has changed because Rahul Gandhi is there, he is 49 years old. He was born in 1970 and we still call him a young leader. So let's make him the yardstick and for our convenience. So if you look at leaders who were born after 1970, I mean, that, that was when Rahul Gandhi was born, you have just nine ministers in this government who were born in the 1970s. And I can name you, uh, Anurag Thakur, he is 45 years old. You have Kiran Rijiju, who is uh, 48 years old. And actually, I've got a list of uh, all these ministers who were born in the 70s. Now you have uh, Mansuk Manwadia, you have uh, Babul Supriyo, Sanjeev Balyan. Uh, then you have Kailash Chaudhary, Devshri Chaudhary. Ramesh Teli. Now, these are the only people who are only ministers who were born in the 1970s. All others are of a, an earlier vintage, born in 40s, 50s, 60s. And why I am asking this, why we are discussing today is, you know, when you have protests by students all over. Now, there may be a grain of truth in BJP leaders' assertions or allegations that opposition leaders are backing such protests whether it's against the Citizenship Amendment Act or some other issues. But what we have seen uh, since 2014 when uh, Modi came to power here in Delhi, we have seen protests happening in one campus after another. Now, uh, you remember first it started in uh, FTI Pune. Then you had in Hyderabad you know, University uh, after the death of Rohit Vemula. And we have seen a series of protests. For some reason or the other, our campuses have been on the boil. But you don't really see any young face who'd go and basically interact with them. Some may be misled. Some may have political motivations. Some may have some ideological affi affiliations with some, part, uh, with some organizations. Yet we cannot dub all of them as Tukri Tukri Gang, as BJP leaders love to call them. There might be some genuine regions in case of a lot of youngsters whose grievances, who think their grievances are not being heard. But what do we have? We don't have a single young minister who would go out and actually empathize with them or take up their case in the government here. Whether they would succeed or not, that's a matter of conjecture. We can just guess what would happen. But we just don't really have any such face. Why is it happening? Uh, I'll come to that later uh, while answering your questions. I'll first t take a few questions that have been sent to sent to our uh, sent by our viewers, and then while answering those questions, I'll try to address this. Why is so? Why is it not happening, Mr. D K Singh? This is Mr. Praveen Vaidya from Pune. There is a talent crisis in this government, definitely. And whether is there any chance of becoming ministers like? dynamic leaders Surya, Jayan Sinha and Rajavardhan Rathod, they are not even considered. Why? Well, from so the first part of your question when you talk about talent crisis, yes, what have our ministers done? Now we have, your, we have our consumer affairs minister Ram Vilas Paswan who is 73 years old. We know how he handled the onion crisis. 
Now today the situation is we imported, we placed orders for 36,000 metric tons of onions. We have got 18,000 metric tons. States are not going to lift it. States who wanted it earlier are not lifting those onions because first of all the quality is not good and then the need has been taken care of. The orders for imports were placed so late that they don't need it now. So we are in a situation where we are now requesting Bangladesh to take our onions. So we import and then we are trying to export. Now Bangladesh is telling us, okay, look, we have to give us some incentives like free transportation. Only then we will accept your onions. So that's our policy. Well, anyway, so if you say that Ram Bilas Paswan is from a different party, yes, he is a BJP ally. He is not a BJP minister. Let's talk about some BJP ministers. Now, our skill development minister, Mahindranath Pandey, for instance, he became a minister because he was the BJP, UP BJP president when the party won party did very well in Lok Sabha elections, post Lok Sabha elections were brought here. What is it done? Now recently you had this report of uh, the Parliamentary Committee on Labour. The report said, you know, there was a target of providing a skill to 11 million people. Of that target, only 5.5 million or 55 lakh people could be enrolled. And at the end of it, only 13 lakh have got the job. So from 11 million to 1.3 million. And that's a very ambitious project of the Prime Minister. We see what the Minister is doing. Look at across sectors, I mean, there are 56 Ministers in this government. Can you count even six who you know for their innovative ideas, out-of-box ideas, who have done brilliantly well? No, you don't even have six. So there is a talent crisis, but somehow the younger leaders are not getting any chance. We'll see what they do if, when they become the ministers, but first give them the chance. You are talking about Tejashri Surya. He is uh, 29 years old, Bangalore South MP. He's a, he's a first time MP. We talked about Jan Sinha. He was a minister in uh, the government from 2014 to 19, and a brilliant minister. He had a grasp of the subject. You know, somebody who is from Howard, he went to the University of Pennsylvania. Before that, he was in IIT with that kind of educational background and the kind of exposure he had across the world. He was with McKinsey for years. He worked everywhere. He brought a lot of international experience and expertise in the government. But we saw in 2019 when this government came and the NDA too came to power. Jan Sena was nowhere. Tejashi Surya, we don't know yet because he, he right now he's a darling of the party, more because of his controversial statements. But again, he's a brilliant lawyer. I mean, not because of his professional expertise, but he's a brilliant orator. He is supposed to be sharp. We don't, he may get a chance because the Prime Minister is going to revamp his team sooner or later. Budget session is starting from 31st. So probably next month during the recess or after the budget session in April, we may see some revamp in the team, so some young people may, may get a chance. But as for this question, like why are young people not being given the chance? I know my guess is, you know, first of all, our the minimum is required to contest elections. In India, it's 25. So if you you want to contest elections for the Lok Sabha, you have to be 25 years old. In other countries, it has changed. Now our Parliamentary system of government is based on the UK model. Now, in the UK in 2007, that minimum age was reduced from 21 to 18 years. So, if you are just 18 years old, you can contest the election for the House of Commons there. In Australia, it's 18. In the US, of course, it's in the US, it's 25. In Pakistan, also, it's 25. But then here in Sri Lanka, you have 18. The many countries where the, this minimum age for candidacy is 14. I don't know whether it will work out in India because when the, this debate was happening in the Constituent Assembly, there were divergent views that, you know, at 18, or even for the voting age, actually, there was divergent views. Okay. Then you remember it was Rajiv Gandhi who brought the, age, the voting age to 18, early it was 21. There are a lot of views that at this age, you probably, you're not mature enough to basically uh, become an MP or to, you know, uh, to be a voter. And before 25, you are not supposed to be mature enough to represent your constituency. And if you are becoming an MP at 25, 
or later, the chances of you becoming a minister in the next 10 years are slim, I would say, because of sheer complex complexity. How do you impress the prime minister if he has to pick you up? How does he decide? In the Lok Sabha, you don't get many chances of proving your ability or showing off your knowledge or grasp of the subject. So what you see, you have uh, many youngsters making controversial uh, statements everywhere. And they have reasons also because you remember Giraj Singh, before 2014 election, he said, that well, anybody who doesn't want Nain Modi to be the prime minister should go to Pakistan. So when the government is formed, Giraj Singh becomes, first becomes an MOS, minister of state. Then he's promoted as cabinet minister. He's a cabinet minister today. So people see this very easy way out when you're making controversial statements just to be noticed by your party top brass, by the Prime Minister, but that doesn't always help. Giraj Singh might have got it, but the Prime Minister may not necessarily pick you up because you're making controversial statements. So what I'm driving at is the opportunity to show your skills, show your understanding and grasp, and your ability to run the government are very few. And that's probably why uh, the Prime Minister is not able to pick up the kind of youngsters or, the, or not able to appreciate the kind of talent he might have in his own party in the Lok Sabha. He might be looking around because as we just discussed the state of the government today where everything is being driven by the Prime Minister's office and the ministers who are there are not known for their or haven't done any exemplary job as such. There will be a revamp, probably some youngsters will get a chance. Hi, this is Rohan from Mumbai. Considering that the current group of BJP leaders will be coming to retirement age, the unspoken 76 year age limit, what does the next generation of BJP leaders look like? Are they more moderate, not too different from the current stock or like Yogi Adityanath or more extremist and radical group? And what does the capability of the new generation look like in terms of elections? Rohan, let me uh, clarify at the outset. Uh, this 75 years uh, cut off, that's an unwritten uh, code. And basically, it was meant for people who are now in Mark Darsak Mandal in the BJP. Although there is no written code. Officially, the party has never stated it. The Prime Minister has never, has never said this. In fact, uh, I remember a few months back, the Prime Minister was interacting with his party leaders, uh, party workers in Varanasi. And one of them requested him, that the Prime Minister did not say anything. He just smiled. So, this cut-off phase is... Just notional, that is point number one. Second, coming to uh, the ability of the young leaders in the party, it's very difficult to say. You know, what is happening is when your top brass talks provocative language and when you think that you, well, you can endear yourself to your party leadership only by making controversial pronouncements, you also go the same way. So today, for instance, that is uh, on a Monday, when you watch it, it will be Tuesday. But a few hours back, uh, you heard Anurag Thakur. You heard his slogan, Desh ke gaddaron ko goli maro. Now, it's atrocious. But then what do you expect from Anurag Thakur when everybody is talking that language? You see all the top BJP leaders being very aggressive and sometimes even vituperative in condemning their opponents or to respond to voices which might not be in sync with their views. That's a problem. If you set that kind of a model for your young leaders, the other leaders you will get. So frankly, I don't really know. There are many young leaders, as I said, at least 26 BJP MPs in the Lok Sabha are under 40. And I'm sure many of them may be are very talented. Now, see for instance, Poona Mahajan, she has been doing very well. She's 39, she could get a chance. You must have heard Ladakh MP, uh, Namgyal. He's 33, 34. And we heard his speech in Lok Sabha. He looks mature. You have uh, many MP, Tejasi Surya being one. So out of 26, that is below 40, you have many choices. But how do you get their talent out? How do you assess that? If making headlines through provocative speeches or comments, if that becomes your template for uh, going up the ladder, 
it's, it's a crisis kind of a situation for the party. So somewhere I think the BJP needs to look at how to basically hone talent of its uh, young team and give them opportunities. Uh, sir, isn't it the problem of every political party in India about uh, lacking of young people in front line, be it a minister or an MP or an MLA? Ali, I agree, agree with you. It's in every party. In Congress, I'm talking about the figure for the BJP. In Congress, uh, you have the seven MPs who are below 40. I mean, the Lok Sabha. The young code that you see everywhere. Now, they're all dynasts, or most of them are dynasts. And look at all other parties. It's the same case. You don't really see somebody uh, coming from the grassroots and rising up the ladder suddenly. Now, in other, uh, in, say, uh, suddenly in SP in 2018, when the Gorakhpur by-election happened, we had this young person called Parveen Nishad. He won that election on an SP ticket on Chief Minister Yogi Aitanath's home turf. And it was kind of, you know, he's a Nishad and there was a political sensation there. What happens? 2019 elections come before that. He joins the BJP. He is a BJP MP now. And the last we heard from him was, uh, if I recall it right, he was being asked about uh, the rape incidents in UP. And he said all these opposition leaders are responsible for this. So we don't really know, I mean, how to judge these people. But yes, uh, bring them in the government, see what they do. It happened in the UPA also. You had some good ministers. Now you had, uh, say, in 2009, in Manmohan Singh government, you had Jitin Prashad, you had Pratik Patel. There were many youngsters who were in early 30s, late 30s. They were given the chance and they did well. Only that somehow in our political system, when we bring in a youngster, we just give them minister of state rank where you don't really get the opportunity to show your talent or prove yourself or come up with any ideas because it's your cabinet minister who decides what is going to happen. All policy measures are taken by cabinet minister. So ministers of a state happen to be just figurehead. So when I'm talking about the possibility of the prime minister revamping his team and bringing in some youngsters, I just hope that they are given more responsibilities where they can perform. Not like, you know, you have brought Anurag Thakur in the government. But he's Minister of State Finance. When you know when the finance minister herself is not able to deliver and everything is being done from the Prime Minister's office, what do you expect a, a Minister of State to kind of perform? So let's see, we, just, we are keeping our fingers crossed. We may have some great talent coming our way uh, in the government after the revamp. Let's see, we are also waiting. Hi, my name is H. Singh. The problem with BJP is they aren't ready to take up the responsibilities after winning elections. They're constantly in election mode. So does it really matter if the ministers are young or old? Thank you. I agree to an extent that, you know, all the ministers are the entire government machinery. I'm on the political side of it. They're always busy in uh, elections. Or the election mindset continues all the time. But... Even in this government, when you see everything centralized, when PMO is taking all the decisions, individual ministers can make a lot of difference. Now, say your human resource development minister, uh, Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank, you see the pro all these protests around the country. Where do you see him intervening? Now, national education policy was part of the BJP manifesto in 2014. Till now, it has not been rolled out. There's still a debate how how to go about it, what to include, what not to include. It has been five and a half years. Now, talking about the HRD minister, uh, Nishank, he is the former Uttarakhand uh, chief minister. In 2014, uh, the first, when he came to parliament, we were in the Lok Sabha, we were hearing him. His claim was that Jyotish, that is astrology, astrology is much better than science. His claim was we conducted nuclear tests lakhs of years ago. He named some sage. So if you bring somebody with these beliefs, and then expect him to deliver in the education sector. I mean, we are really uh, I mean, joking here. This government has made several promises of which very few have been fulfilled. There is a lack of employment and poor condition of economy because of which most of the youth of this country are angry. I think the reason why there aren't any young ministers is that they will identify with the anger of the jobless youth and may bring policies that may not sit well with the BJP leadership. Your opinion. 
Benson, I hope you are being sarcastic when you say that the reason for not inducting them is because they will empathize with the unemployed youth more. Fact is, if they are inducted, they will probably empathize with the youth better. In the government also, today the narrative you have about unemployment, oh, this, all, this, all this is bunkum and there is no such unemployment problem. You see reels of statistics, conflicting uh, reports about the uh, state of unemployment and nobody in the government or in the ruling party is ready to accept the fact that there is an unemployment problem. Although you have various reports saying that how it's, it's the lowest in the last 40 years, it's the worst in the last 40 years. But nobody is ready to accept. So I, 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 I believe if you have young people in the government, they can probably change that narrative. They can probably reach out to the youth and at least convince them that the government is concerned about their, uh, their plight and government is working towards solving it. Instead of simply dismissing their concerns, these ministers can probably reach out to them and be more empathetic and also uh, bring a sense of urgency in the government towards addressing these issues. So that's it from me uh, in this episode of uh, Politically Correct. Please keep sending your feedback and your questions. And if you want me to uh, take up a particular subject for discussion, please write to us and we'll uh, get back to you on this. Thank you very much. <laughs>